I want to jump to this story here and give a shout out to the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Jones, because oh. uh, he was right about Epstein. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. That's right. He was uh, he was right about Epstein. I remember when uh, when the Epstein story broke, Joe Rogan was like, "Dude, Alex Jones was right." Yeah, and, and it's it's like it's crazy because Alex has gone on Joe's show and said really crazy stuff, chimeras, five G towers, whatever, interdimensional beings. And then he says some of these other stories, like the Epstein thing, and you're like, you, people don't want to believe it, and then it turns out to be true. Wait a we got this story from Bloomberg. Being thrown off social media was supposed to end Alex Jones's career. It made him even richer. I think this is an important story. For one, they admit, or at least they're asserting, they wanted Jones. It was supposed to. It says exactly. it right there in the headline. It, right it was there. supposed to <laughs> stop the spread of violence. I'm sorry, that's like, right. Like, they just admit it. They just straight up admit we were trying to end his career. They said initially it was because he was promoting violence and they had to stop right. it for the safety. Now it's it was supposed to end his career. Now you've got in the in the court case against him, you had the the lawyer uh, for the family say, "Don't just punish him, destroy his platform, and make sure he can't rebuild it." Mm. But I think this is a big story. They claim that Alex Jones is worth a lot of money. Alex Jones has commented to me on the story saying that he does not, in fact, have this much money. He is not making this money this much money. They're bankrupt and he's broke. Look, I know he said that, but I kind of find it hard to believe that someone who's had such a powerful media empire would not have saved up money somewhere, set up trusts with his family or something. So maybe personally, yes, he is broke, but a lot of the, a lot of that wealth probably transferred out through various trusts or other 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 ways to you know family members. There was a story in the New York Post that he transferred a portion of property to his wife or something. I don't know. The fact is, this story is a white pill. Mm. The fact that they are so desperate to stop Alex Jones and they can't. Yeah. It shows that, well, Alex, despite all of the, th the things they've thrown at him and, the, and the, the, the damage they have caused to his business, he's persisted, he's survived, and he's been effective. The reason they're going after him is because he's one of the most effective supporters of Trump, or was, and that he's influential. This, all, I think at the same time, the, the white pill that they, I, I think the FBI going after Trump that doesn't, it makes me a little bit pessimistic in terms of civil war. Take a drink, everybody. But it makes me actually yeah. optimistic in terms of the upcoming elections. Mm. They are so panicked about the, the influence of people like Jones, the influence of people like Trump, that they're desperately pulling moves like this. It's a whack-a-mole. They've been freaked out since 2007 when they realized that an internet video blogger on YouTube could rally 500,000 people to vote for whoever they want. Uh, the CNN got involved in 2007. We're like, we're going to do the CNN YouTube debates. All right, kids, all you super influential, new famous young people that are way more powerful than we are. Let's create an authority so we can kind of make a semblance of controlling you. And so they did these lame ass YouTube debates with CNN where they like wouldn't. I tried to ask questions about the Federal Reserve and they like just would ignore of that. Course, and they're of like, course. No, no, we talk about Obama's favorite foods and things they, like uh... that. They're in complete uh, hanging by a thread, the global financial market. I didn't know what globalists were. A liberal international economy. Yeah. That's right. it. The lie. I love it. But I remember back in the day, like I say back in the day, but 10 years ago, Obama <laughs> did the Reddit AMA. They asked me anything. It was like a big deal. Huge but, deal. But he only answered like, what, 10 questions? And right. they were very stocked. Like, what would you do with tech, with healthcare? Bull. We're going to give more of that. What, we like it. What started changing is that I think people are sick of the obvious lies. Remember Deepwater Horizon? South Park made a, made a joke about how the, uh, the, the BP guy goes on TV and he goes, we're sorry. We're so sorry. We're sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> when, when that happens, does any reasonable person believe they're going to tell the truth? Does any sane person think that Jen Psaki or uh, you know, Jean-Pierre are going to come out and just be like totally honest with the American people. And for that matter, Spicer or uh, you know, Sarah Sanders, for instance. I don't expect any of them to come out and just blatantly tell me the truth about what's going on. Not a Republican, not a Democrat, not, not Trump's people. There's, there's obvious legitimate reasons why they can't tell you the truth for good or bad, right? We can't leak secrets if we have plans. We need to compartmentalize and make sure our plans are, you know, if we want to do something good, we can't just go out and, and explain exactly what we're doing. If I'm, for instance, going to be suing some, some organization, and I think it's a really good thing and it needs to happen, well, coming out and explaining in detail what I'm doing just helps them and stops me from doing it. So for obvious reasons, you're just not getting the truth. But what happens is with people like Alex Jones, they feel authenticity. And that was a big shift. Whether Jones was right or wrong, 
you, 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 the, the dude believes what he's saying. Yeah. Oh, he's right. A lot of times, he, uh, he, he was talking about the globalists in like 2005 and six. I was like, okay, I think he's being a little hyperbolic. He's being vague. What the heck is he even talking about? But now I find out that there's like multinational corporations where they have their headquarters in one country, but all their activity or a bulk of their activities in another country. They're basically tax evading. Uh, and that's a huge, I mean, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, he's talking about like World Economic Forum crap. Re re remember, uh, I don't know if you guys have been watching or listening to Alex Jones for a long time, by chance. I don't know. But I, rem I remember, so I've been on the internet my whole life. I remember the loose change virality moment where people were burning yeah. loose change and all of them had discs and like sharing them around with everybody. Well, so um, when I was in college, I remember that. Yeah, the Ron Paul revolution. Some, like, yeah, you would see like the loose change guys would be around, yeah. I told this to Alex Jones uh, the first time he came on the show. I was like, I remember when you were ragging on real ID. Hmm. When you were like, yeah, they passed this bill, yeah. they're gonna be federalizing IDs, this is what it means. And he was raising alarm bells about it and the potential problems. And what happens is we're frogs in a pot, the pot is boiling, and we don't realize how much has really changed. But I remember now a few years ago, we go to the airport and there's all the signs everywhere, get your real ID, update your IDs, otherwise you're not compliant. So he was right about it. And he said it would do a bunch of things that it does because he was reading the news and reporting it accurately. Now we're in it, real ID is here, and nobody cares. Everyone's just like, oh, I got my ID, my ID updated, whatever. So he, he, he talks about the, the incrementalization one small grain of sand at a time, and before you realize it, your whole world is different. Well, just think about this. You go to the store at Walmart or wherever, you make some purchases on your credit card. All that data is there. You go online again on Walmart, and you look, and you say, here's all the things you've been buying. Do you want any more of those? When the FBI wants data on you, they just send a letter to AT&T or to Walmart or to Chase Bank, and they request that data. Yep. And they have your whole life right there. Your credit cards, your purchases, where you were at. Apparently, uh, the phone companies have been giving people's text messages mm. to, uh, to like the January 6th committee and stuff like that. Well, this came up also with Ring Camera. That oh, wow. a lot the of the, police that, yeah. so the, uh, the issue that came up was that police departments, ICE, other agencies were able to access Ring without the permission of the but like Derek is saying, just going to the company directly, and of course the companies are saying, "Hey, we're 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 trying to prevent crimes. What if there's a, um, you know, a, a child grabbing incident and we caught it on ring camera? You know, would you want to notify the authorities right away?" But then the question, of, and you could say, "Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's some utility to that, obviously." But then the question, of course, becomes, "How much are they watching? Are they do they know when you come in and out of your home? Do they know who's coming in and out of your home?" Well, what that's metadata, tracking? so yes, you know, yeah, that's and the they crazy. Would know all of it. The crazy thing about metadata, and this is, I think, it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure Brett Kavanaugh ruled in favor of the government's ability to use metadata as not as a violation of the Fourth Amendment. But I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I was doing research in that regard. But the thing about metadata is, the argument is, when you walk outside your house, anyone can see you do it. Right. So that's not a right. You, you have no expectation of privacy. If the police are sitting in public and they watch you leave your home, they now know you left your home. Well, that's too bad. The argument was that with metadata, when you visit websites you're not hiding yourself. You're not, there's no, there's no expectation of privacy when your computer sends a request out. Anyone who wants can see it. The problem is with metadata, it's not just about watching you leave your house. We watch your house. We can guess where you're going. Is he going to work? What time is it? Mm, I don't know. He's not going to work. Maybe he's going to get food. Where's he going to go? I don't know. With metadata, they can tell when you're going to poop. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. There was a, an article about how Facebook accurately predicts when people have to make movements, as it were, because they have all of this metadata. They know when you put your phone down. They know when you're walking. They know when you're likely eating. They can calculate all this stuff. And now the government can easily get access to all of that. The one that I saw that was very similar to that was um, pregnancies. Mm -hmm. That they could yeah. base, yeah. they could base based on your Google searches, based you know your I'm you know I have these symptoms. What's going on? And the case study that I, I remember reading was a girl had gotten some ads in the mail for, you know, like folic acid and basic pregnancy stuff from, and coupons from the local Target because she was a frequent shopper there. They knew she was pregnant before she did. And the dad is the one who saw it and said, <laughs> right. what? Yeah. And then he called and said, yeah. why are you sending my daughter? And they were like, it's Oh, a, there was a, right, yeah, it was right, a, right. It was like an algorithm that now I remember. she didn't know she was pregnant, but she was buying things yes. that they just knew 
And so this big, was the pattern that led you yep. to Big Brother uh-huh. knows uh-huh. Big Brother knows when you'll poop before you do. You know what concerns me is we're talking about the Fourth Amendment rights and is it a violation of Fourth Amendment rights? But I think it's so far beyond American government at this point that we're, when we complain about what the American government, the United States American government is doing, it's kind of like just complaining about what one of the lieutenants is doing because everyone, all these governments have the ability to scrape your metadata. It doesn't matter. They don't have the CCP doesn't have a Fourth Amendment to violate. They just right. do whatever they want. The so reality, it, it is harder in a certain sense for the CCP to get access to our data than the U.S. government because the U.S. government has authority over these organizations. Well, they just call it Barrick Swalwell. They just buy it. Yeah. So the CCP, through any one of the companies they control, can just buy the data. And then they know. Just, or, I want, it's part of the contract. It gives them access to it. And right. that's what we've seen in some of our investigations. Not only that, but let's talk about 23andMe and how much oh, of that is getting man. sourced by China. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, why is it? Why do, why do you guys think Twenty Three and Me is that cheap? Mm. Come on, just they're selling. Harvesting. They're selling all that stuff on I was, the back end. All I was. I was. I was. I was at a party, and I'll keep the story as vague as possible. And I was talking to someone about. Um, Wait, Tim, you promised me you would never. Sh- <laughs> I was talking to somebody about COVID testing, and I said something like, you know, the the, the problem with the mass testing is the concern that China is going to get access to this to this DNA information, and then someone else overheard. You know, basically it was like, oh, it's conspiracy. It's fake news. You know, you can't go around saying these things when people here pay attention to the news and knows what's going on. You're lying, blah, blah, blah. And I just took my phone. I pulled up the NPR article that says China is getting access to data through COVID testing. And I just like, here you go. And they were like, uh, well, I'm like, dude, like I do this for a living, man. Right, right, right. I'm not making these stories up. I'm reading the news. And that's this, that, that's that's a lot. For, uh, I would say the same is true for Alex Jones. I think the issue with Alex, though, is that he stretches things a little too far. And what I mean by that is atrazine was the big story, uh, interfering with the endocrine systems of frogs, and then he yells at turning the frogs That gay. was a big problem. They were turning them, they were making them hermaphroditic, meaning they right. had sex organs of the male and the female. They weren't gay, and he said that they were turning them gay. Like, the problem with Alex and is that over time is that he's also, he, he leans into the entertainment, the jokester, All right, which is but, bad for no, a so journalist. Here's, okay, but explain this to me. Why does the Rachel Maddow standard not apply to Alex Jones? Mm. Oh, right. Why is it that when you, when, I forget who it was, but they were suing Rachel Maddow over this and they and then she came in and said well this is an opinion show everything everything i say is my opinion and the judge rules okay well then it's all covered well for alex i don't even care about legality stuff that's not what i meant when i was saying the problem i just am concerned like why why he's looked at as ridiculed by, as he has been by societies because he does both the jokes and the news no, and you don't saying. know ripping, which is which. ripping so so this one thing that happened when he was being sued i think is that he claimed he was acting and then the, the left came out and they were like, this oh, he's admitting it, he's admitting yeah, yeah, yeah. it. And he was like, no, he does commercials. There's a commercial where he rips his shirt off and then sky, and then flies through the ceiling of his no, that building. That a commercial. He, he, right, yeah, he, he actually I've, did. Tim, I've he seen turned him do red. that. Yeah. Come on. I, I do want to shout out yeah. that that ad where he's like, he redder. You, you know the one that's like before and after, but yeah, all that yeah, happens, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. red. It's redder. Was that real? <laughs> I don't know. It was hilarious either way. My, like, my favorite see. one, it was the doctor, I forget who it was, but he, he he takes the super male vitality and goes, I will now activate my muscles by doing push-ups. <laughs> and then he just like tears his shirt off and starts doing push-ups and he comes up and he's got, he's turned into like a werewolf. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> like, and then I'm he like, says he's acting and then, yeah. you know, it, it's funny when I see, I see, I talk to regular people or I see Facebook posts from a lot of these lefties. They don't know anything about the guy. They don't know. They don't know. They they sit there blindly believing the lies. It's 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 remarkable to me that after all of the lies, these people still don't wake up, and it's well, it's got to be willful. Well, it's the double standard all the time we see with the media. You know, one standard for liberals, another standard for conservatives. But, you know, this this issue that you're you're touching on, I think, you know, strikes home to a lot of our listeners. Yeah. Well, and, and and when I bring up Rachel Maddow, it's it's not necessarily to to point out that it's double standard in terms of the way society presents them. But now you've got a situation in the United States where you're creating and and Derek, you talk about this all the time, this two tiered system of justice where one one standard can apply to Alex Jones and you can ruin him and take away his entire career because he got a story wrong. But Rachel Maddow is perfectly fine to say whatever she wants because it's her opinion. We need parallel economies. So shout out to Dan Bongino's Parallel Economy. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Rumble and shout out to Public Square. Public Square, love it. If love you guys Public haven't Square. downloaded Public Square, Public download SQ. it. Yeah, Public Square is uh, an app 
that shows you all the businesses that that believe in your values and all that stuff. So we, I'm thinking about like agree with you on values. The parallel, the parallelity that we do need, Ooh. like 2007 internet video. You could tell that the young video bloggers were taking control of society. What it does the government, the federal government, have? that we don't like if we were to create like just the keep, army keep they have yeah, the army yeah. they have <laughs> like know. the tax code system 87,000 armed IRS That's agents true, who are trained too. to kill yeah. poor people so it's all like military it's all like guns and enforcement they yeah. control like the enforcement the stick. stuff they have the stick and that's they is just like what the executive branch and congress basically you don't want to give that I don't want to give that stuff to the populace no it's I not just the executive thing. branch and congress that's that's the problem though is it's supposed to be the executive branch and Congress backstopped by the judiciary. But the problem with all of this is that you have an administrative state that has grown and become the fourth branch of government. That's who Liz Cheney is campaigning for. That's your MSNBC, your CNN plug in right there. They're tied into academia. They're tied into the entire education system. They're tied into the defense industrial complex. This is that fourth branch of government that was never supposed to be. Do you think it's that we need it to no. exist within this global system no. of like totalitarian governments vying for control? Absolutely not. Then do you think it's like I mean we need we you need a military, right? You need a military industry you need industry to keep up with that military, sure. But the the power should always be with the representatives. And you have a Congress that's completely abrogated that because most congressmen or a lot of them, I'm not gonna say all of them, but they would rather go raise money and hang out on the golf course and then do whatever the lobbyist wants. It's the rulemaking and enforcement mechanisms of of EPA or Department of Education with new rules and executive orders on lots of different issues that affect our, our kids going to school. It's the DOJ and FBI being immune from real oversight and control by the executive branch, the president, whether it was President Trump or whether it's Joe Biden who says, I don't know what's going on. No one's talked to me. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, Tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.